So the head of the Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency, called on the Secretary of Defense. I said to him, you know our situation. I am here on the instruction of my prime minister. He was doing most of the talking. I did uh, ask one or two questions. At the meeting, I realized that America, because of Vietnam, was unwilling to act alone. And they did not succeed in organizing the International Naval Force. Also, Eisenhower made a commitment to Israel about the Straits in 1956, so America would no longer oppose Israel acting on its own. I was friendly in, during my discussion and friendly uh, as he left, but uh, he didn't ask for answers, he got no answers. <laughs> Amit raced back to Israel to report to the prime minister and the cabinet not to expect international help. I gave a detailed account of my trip to Washington, and I said, I recommend we launch the war as soon as possible. Not one of the ministers disagreed. We went for our usual walk. Suddenly, Eshkol starts humming. He was completely tone deaf. He had this Hasidic song he liked to sing. He sang it over and over again. The rabbi has told us to enjoy ourselves because hard times are coming. So I asked him, what's happening, dearest? And he told me, tomorrow the war will start. There will be widows, there will be orphans. There will be bereaved parents. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? The generals chose the morning of June 5th for the attack. The chief of staff and I took a decision. On the night of June 4th, we would sleep at home. The tom-toms in Israel work like in the jungle. If the chief of staff and Air Force chief both come home, word gets round that tomorrow is going to be quiet. That was the commander's bedtime message. Leaving behind only 12 fighters to defend Israel, 180 aircraft took off for Egypt. Their target was 45 minutes away. We observed total radio silence. We flew at the height of the waves for about 15 minutes. We flew low over the sand dunes. We crossed the Suez Canal at Kantara and entered the delta. As we flew over the delta, farmers waved to us. They probably thought we were Egyptian. Most of the Israeli squadrons flew out to sea far to the west. They had extra fuel tanks to enable them to approach Egypt's air bases from an unexpected direction. That was the longest 45 minutes in my life. The hands on my watch didn't seem to move. They went very slowly. As the Israeli bombers approached their targets, the Egyptians received a coded message from Jordan. They spotted Israeli planes heading towards us. So they sent us a signal from their radar base to warn us. The signal was in code. Our codes had changed the day before, and we had real trouble decoding it. 
The Ministry of Defense asked the air defense people what they had done with the signal they had received. It had the code word 